Well, hey guys, I'm Lynn Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park Church, and uh, we're so excited to be sharing with you in your life groups this week in this new series called uh, Fish Story. And we're talking about uh, asking God for things and then getting something else. And, you know, maybe you begged God for something. Maybe you've planned something and it all fell apart or it didn't go the way that you hoped that it would. Now, that's an important issue in a relationship with God. Why does that take place? One thing you can be absolutely sure of in a relationship with God is this. If that happens, if you plan something and it doesn't go that way, if you ask God for something and it, it, it goes all wrong, it goes the other direction from the way you planned it, listen, guys, God is trying to get you to go the right direction. He's pointing you the right direction. Now, no story in the Bible illustrates that better than the story of Jonah does. Uh, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1 says simply this, The Lord, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, uh, Go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. Well, Jonah wanted to stay in California, and he ended up in, in China. Uh, wait a minute, maybe that's me. Uh, anyway, um, more accurately, Jonah wanted to stay in joyful Jerusalem and ended up in nasty Nineveh, right? So he got a word from God. That's what this, this little one line says right here, Jonah 1.1. 1, 1. He got a word from God and God said, get up. In other words, what God said is, get ready for further instructions. You're not ready for what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to have some stuff for you to do you're not ready for. And then he said, go. And it wasn't what Jonah was looking for at all. It wasn't what Jonah had been asking for at all. Now that's a consistent pattern in the Word of God. Um, the way that he works very often is, is to move us forward in his plan and his purpose for us, and it looks totally different than what we were expecting. The story that we're going to talk about in our life groups this week isn't from Jonah, but it illustrates this perfectly, this, this business of, of not getting what we ask for, but on top of that, this business of, of what Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 says. The word comes, God says, get ready, I've got further instructions for you, and then it's not what you thought it was going to be, but you needed to get ready for it, didn't you? Yeah, okay, so storying. I'm going to tell you the story. Listen carefully. Somebody's going to retell the story from memory as best they can. Everybody else in your group is going to rebuild it. Be a lot of fun. Well, first let me tell you that this story from 2 Chronicles chapter 20 is about King Jehoshaphat, a king of Judah that was a great guy, got, had a super relationship with God. He was one of the good ones. And he'd been praying for peace for his country. And what did he get instead? A battle. Yeah, he did. Here it goes. Uh, 2 Chronicles, Old Testament, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from uh, the other side of the sea. It's already close. Now he says, and, and Jehoshaphat was alarmed, uh, and he resolved to inquire of the Lord. I love that. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, uh, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood be there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, and, and he stood in the assembly. He said, King Jehoshaphat, listen. And all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow march down against them. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, 
O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites and Kohites and Korites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. They, as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. Faith in his prophets means faith in the word of God and you'll be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, uh, and praise the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men of Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. In other words, they were fighting each other. After they finished slaughtering men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day they assembled uh, where they praised the Lord. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. What an awesome story. Now, Retell that story, and then uh, somebody do it from memory, and then everybody else rebuild that story. Go ahead and do that, would you please? All right, guys, let's do some discussion questions. Uh, be praying right now in your relationship with God. Be asking God to show you what He wants you to learn so you can really grow on this. You have a super opportunity to really get a hold of some things. Question number one. Uh, what do you think the primary meaning of this story is? What is God trying to say here? Go ahead and talk about that. All right, question number two. Jehoshaphat had asked for peace, and he ended up getting war, or at least a, a battle. Uh, can you see any reasons, according to this story now, according to the Bible right here, can you see any reasons that God did not give Jehoshaphat what he asked for? Go ahead and, and look through there, pray about that, and talk about that, would you please? Well, guys, you know, in, in the Bible, war or a battle is generally an analogy for the battles that we have in this life. Uh, you, you know, it, it actually happened, it's events that took place in the Old Testament, but the Bible says that, that they're examples for us so we won't set our hearts on evil. So as you look through this and you understand the, the picture that God is giving us, it's an analogy very often for the battles that we have in life, battles with, you know, with the enemies of God, battles a, against um, people who want to persecute or, or challenge your faith. Uh, battles against sin that you have in your life, and struggles against sin, perhaps uh, against temptation. So it's an analogy for the battle that you have in life, with the various things in life. So question number three, keeping that in mind, describe the present battle in your life. Now we all are always going through something, but uh, this is in particular the struggle that you're having right now. The the, the battle that's taking place with sin or with temptation or 
persecution, something like that. So go ahead and, and what's the big one in your life right now? What is that? Share that, would you please? All right, guys, great. Question number four. Looking carefully at this story again, please look back through it. Refresh yourself here. Look at it again. What kinds of things can you learn about your present battle, the battle that's going on in your life right now, the battle that you're having right now? What, what can you learn about your present battle from this story? What can you learn from this story? Here's some thoughts. Here's some different things to talk about. What exactly is victory? according to the Bible here in this story. What, what is victory? What are you looking for? What, what, what's the end result that, that God would give you? What's a win in this case? And another thing, how does winning happen? How does it take place? Uh, what happens in order for you to have a win in your battle? What does winning look like? What does it look like when you have won the battle? Um... Last idea to talk about here. What's your part and what is God's part? All right, guys, that's your uh, life group discussion questions for this week. God bless you. Have the rest of a great life group, and I will see you soon.